Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 24, Text 12, Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Lord Brahma said, My dear son Kadama, since you have completely accepted my instructions, without duplicity, showing them proper respect, you have worshipped me properly. Whatever instructions you took from me, you have carried out, and thereby you have honored me. <coughs> Purport, Lord Brahma, as the first living entity within the universe, is supposed to be the spiritual master of everyone, and he is also the father, the creator of all beings. Kadama Muni is one of the Prajapatis, or creators of the living entities, and he is also a son of Brahma. Brahma praises Kadama because he carried out the orders of the spiritual master in toto and without cheating. A conditioned soul in the material world has the disqualification of cheating. He has four disqualifications. He is sure to commit mistakes, he is sure to be illusioned, he is prone to cheat others, and his senses are imperfect. But if one carries out the order of the spiritual master by disciplic succession or the parampara system, he overcomes the four defects. Therefore knowledge received from the bona fide spiritual master is not cheating. Any other knowledge which is manufactured by the conditioned soul is cheating only. Brahma knew well that Kadama Muni exactly carried out the instructions received from him and that he actually honored his spiritual master. To honor the spiritual master means to carry out his instructions word for word. In the word for word translation, Srila Prabhupada translates Vakyam as instructions. Generally, Vakya is understood as words. But when words come from the Guru, that is understood as instructions. Even if it's not grammatically composed as instructions, still it is to be understood as instructions. Just like many times Prabhupada said, I request. In one purport Prabhupada wrote that, I request all of the members of the Krishna conscious movement to become pure devotees so that others may take advantage of their association and also become purified. So we can take that, that's a request that can be accepted as an instruction. The whole Vedic literature emanates through the, or, or is manifested in this material world. When we say Vedic literature, actually it's Veda, Veda Vani. Vani means sound. And later it's Veda Vyas puts in the form of literature. So Vani is also a name for Saraswati, Vak. Another name, Vak, means sound or word and when coming through this medium it's understood as an instruction we are to receive instructions from the higher level not as the impersonalists and so actually all those who purport to follow the Vedic literature but don't accept the actual conclusion of Vedaisya Sarvera Hameva Vedyaha then they, what they're doing, they're taking the words of the Vedas and interpreting it in their own way, but it's meant to be an instruction. They, among the followers of the Vedas, it's, it's at least verbally accepted or theoretically accepted that we have to follow Vedavani. We have to follow the instructions of the Vedas. But then they, as Prabhupada notes here in this purport, the cheating propensity we interpret according to our own desire. And this is the history of religion. Nowadays, many people in our movement are interested in interfaith meetings, not so much in India, comparative religious studies. But the history of religion in the world is one of cheating. That's all. Priti vite jato kata Dharma nama chale bhagavata kahe taha puri purna chale. 
as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswat Thakur noted, paraphrasing statement of Srimad Bhagavatam that whatever is going on in the name of religion in this world is simply cheating. Because people, they even there are so many great genuine religious teachers, but people take their message and they interpret it for their own purposes. So they become religious instead of being spiritual. Uh, the Prime, the, sorry, the president of India, who is the present president of India, who is known to be a religiously minded person. He, when one of our devotees met him, he said that we are coming from Iskon. It's a spiritual movement. So he said that's very good. He said, we want spiritual movements, not religious movements. He made a differentiation. Something that's actually spiritual means on the platform, Mam Cheo Vyabhicharena Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunan Samatityaitan Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate Beyond the modes of material nature. And that which is religious, it's Priti Vite Jato Kata Dharma Nama Chale Bhagavata Kahitaha Pari Purna chale. Paripurna means completely. It's just a hoax. It's just a complete hoax, whatever is going on in the name of religion. So, Kadama Muni is being congratulated here by Lord Brahma for following his order without duplicity. That is the difference between actual spiritual life and what is normally considered religious life, the duplicity that we take the instruction and we reinterpret it. We may even follow the instruction, but we may do so for some other purpose. Here Srila Prabhupada, ah yes, it, it's in the, in the verse itself, it said that Lord Brahma says that this is the, you have respected me properly. Seniors are to be respected, but the proper respect is to carry out their instruction. Just like <clears throat> we perform Guru Puja and we sing Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitete Kuriya Aikya Arna Kuriya Maneyasha. That the, again the word Vakya, the words from uh, the lotus mouth of the spiritual master. We fix them up in our heart. We make them one with our heart. Annehridaiman moramon brindaban. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the, the ideal of this. That others, they have their mind, which is involved in sense gratification. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind and his heart are one because they are brindavan. Brindavan means the serving spirit. The spirit of service to Krishna. That is brindavan. So, chitete kore aika arna kori homaneyasha. Actually, it's the same statement. Chitete kore aika means the same thing as arna kori homaneyasha. I have no other desire. But just to emphasize, it's just like saying, smartabya satitam Vishnu, vismartabya najatu chit. Always think of Vishnu, never forget him. Actually, it means the same thing because there's no question of one without the other. But it's to emphasize both sides, the positive and the negative. So we sing this and it's easy to sing. But whether or not we're actually meaning that, that will be seen throughout the rest of the day. That if we're actually living according to the instruction of Guru or if we have some other motive. So daily there's Guru Puja and once a year Vyasa Puja, formally. And Vyasa Puja means the formal commitment to go on for the rest of the year living by the motto Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitaite Kariya Aikya Ana Kari Hamanayasha. And daily Guru Puja means to for this day to make that commitment. This is this is actual Guru Puja. 
to live by the instruction of the Guru. Otherwise, it's hypocritical to sing Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya Chitaita Koriya Aikya and then just do anything else according to our own desire. So there's no <coughs> meaning to that. Actual honoring is, as Prabhupada pointed out in his one of his two prayers, I, I can't remember. I, there's Viraha Ashtashtakam and Vaishishashtakam. One, one of his two extant poems in Bengali that he wrote as Vyasapuja offerings to his Guru Maharaj. So he was saying that simply an, on the Vyasapuja day, simply an offering of fruits and flowers, that does not constitute actual worship. But one has to serve the order of the spiritual master. So formally one may offer honor by <coughs> fruits, flowers, offering all these things, bowing down, offering prayers. All these things are required, formal worship. But the actual worship of the spiritual master is in following his instructions, doing what he says. That is actual honor. If one doesn't do what he says, that means we don't actually honor him. Then it's only a formality. Just like we'll often find in <coughs> traditional families that some elder member of the, of the family is honored. But then they, they, they offer him what is called deferential respect. It means just as a show. <coughs> but they don't care for him actually. They'll feed... They'll act humbly in front of him, but they won't follow his instructions. And that's generally everywhere we'll find. In the modern age, one symptom of the modern age is that people don't care to follow anyone. And they're promoting that everywhere. That make yourself number one. Even in Bangladesh, I was just there, I saw some... In Bangladesh, the culture is very strong of <coughs> everyone has to, every individual has to work for the, as a member of the group. You have to, you are a member of your family, you are a member of your village, you are a member of your caste and all these things. But they were advertising some, some cell phone company was advertising that, uh, Make yourself number one. We're, we make you number one. We're doing it all for you. So this is being promoted. Everyone for themselves. This is antithetical to actual human civilization. What to speak of uh, religious or not really spiritual organization. Recently I heard at Sri Chaitanya Mutt, the original Mutt founded by Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswar Thakur. There are many elderly devotees there who are very much, they are much experienced in bhajan. And they know so many shastras but complaining that the, the juniors, they don't want to follow us. They'll bow down and say, Jai Ho Maharaj or whatever. But they don't like to follow anything we say. They have what they think are better ideas. So this, <coughs> this kind of simply giving deferential respect, that's better than openly disrespecting. But actual respect means to carry out the order of the spiritual master. That's why, that's one reason why this, this, uh, Ritvik movement, or the idea that no one can be a guru after Prabhupada, but it's there's no substance to it because one becomes blessed by one's guru to accept disciples and guide them if he's a if he's a follower. So if one is following then uh, automatically, if, if one's connected by following the order to one's own guru, then the spiritual current comes through and others will...
connect to that. They'll want to, those who are spiritually sincere, they'll, they'll, they can find that current and they'll want to connect to that. <coughs> and anyway, this... Uh, And no, no one who's initiating will say that I'm initiating on my behalf. Everyone will say I'm doing on behalf of my guru. Which is what the Ridvik Vadis claim. You have to do on behalf of Prabhupada. But then anyway, no, anyone will do. They, no one's going to say I, I, I'm equal to Lord Brahma. I have a direct connection with Krishna. No, everyone says I'm a servant of my guru and I'm, I'm even our, our own, even those who are very clearly the greatest Acharyas. They all say the same thing, that I see you as representatives of my guru. My guru has sent you to me. Prabhupada said this. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said this. They don't say, only someone like Sai Baba will say that they're self-manifest. But any guru will say like that. The difference between gurus accepting disciples, and as they do in the present day within ISKCON, and the Ridvik system is that in the in the so-called Ridvik system, they don't uh, they don't take any responsibility for the disciple. That's all. They just you initiate and then you, it's you and Prabhupada have a good day. <laughs> That's all. No, they don't take any responsibility to guide them. They th they think that no one's qualified to give guidance. But the uh, that is the system that and what then what happens that even people are giving ridvik initiation then people tend to respect them as gurus anyway because that is the natural culture which is being described here that they practically they act as guru but uh, they say, but they say then that no one's qualified to be guru. But then what happens is anyway people think of them as guru. Just like one of my disciples recently told me he met someone from Bangalore who had taken initiation in the Ridvik temple. And he asked him who his guru was. He didn't know. He said, I'm initiated, I'm from Bangalore. So he said, who's your guru? He said, Madhu Pandit. He thought his guru was Madhu Pandit because they do, they, they practically they follow all the they do everything required except that they say, well, when, when you have any problem, go and see Prabhupada. I'm not going to help you. I'm not. When, there, when there's donations, uh, you can give to me. But when you have problems, then you know, just open the book, that's all. And take the guidance for yourself. So the system of offering on, honor, actual honoring means that we follow the instruction. We should see what is the instruction and do that with intelligence. One has to have sufficient intelligence which will come if one is sincere to serve. This is the whole secret to be save on muk. I'm just a little bit angry about Ritvikism at the moment because I saw one of their silly magazines. But People who are foolish are misled by that. So, so I saw in one of their magazines they were they were criticizing Bhakti Charu Swami and they were quoting from him that we should we should all cooperate together to serve Prabhupada. And then afterwards they're describing his Vyasa Puja and saying, "You see the contradiction." But they they only they see a contradiction. There's no contradiction. They just presume that he must be accepting honor on his own behalf. They can't because they themselves are so contaminated. They can't imagine that any follower of Srila Prabhupada would, as every actual guru in, the, in history has ever done, will accept honor not on his own behalf but to offer it to his own guru. But they can't imagine. It's, it's beyond their imagination that there could be such a process. So it means lack of actual spiritual intelligence that to honor the spiritual master means to carry out his instructions word for word and they take this they, they want to take this absolutely literally without any intelligent application there's a well known story in this connection that 
of the foolish disciple. Actually, disciple cannot be foolish. Disciple must be intelligent because he receives intelligence from the guru, from Krishna. Actually, actually actual guru is Krishna. Krishna Bande Jagat Guru. And anyone who is acting as guru acts as Krishna's representative. Again, if we're not acting as representative, then we're just imitating Sai Baba, that's all. Then we should all accept Sai Baba as our guru, because he's done the biggest swindle of being a guru without any parampara or without any clear conception of Bhagavan, so he himself becomes Bhagavan. So, there was a somewhat foolish disciple, and the guru knew he was somewhat foolish, so they were going on a journey... And knowing him to be somewhat foolish, he told the disciple that you just do whatever I say. And don't do anything that I don't say. He thought he would control him like this. So they were, the guru was riding on the horse and the disciple was following behind. And uh, after some time the guru asked, now I'm very thirsty, you give me water. He said, but the water pack, it fell off five kilometers back. He said, well, why didn't you say anything? You, you should have. He said, well, you didn't tell me. He said, well, any, all right, okay. Well, anything that falls down from the horse now, you, uh, you bring it and put it right in my lap so I can see what it is. So then they're going along and the horse passes still. <laughs> So, you can imagine what he did with it. He picks up the horse dung and puts it right in the lap of the guru. So, then he stopped and cleaned up and then he told him, thinking what to tell him is so foolish. He says, all right, well, from now on if anything falls down from the horse, you tell me, and unless I specifically tell you, don't put it back on the horse and just keep on with the journey. So then they, they were going and some, the horse hit a bump and he jolted and threw the guru off. The guru fell down unconscious and the disciple went up to the guru and said, you fell off the horse, should I put you back? No reply. So he went off with the horse. <laughs> so, So he was following the instructions of the Guru word for word, but he was a fool because he couldn't see what is the purpose of the instruction. He didn't know how to properly honor the Guru. He wasn't chitete koriya aikya. His heart wasn't one with the Guru. He had some other way of thinking. So many people will approach a Guru and so many they'll come. Asking for Ashivad, what for? Now my son is going to take his exam. I have a pain in my back. I went to so many doctors and cost so much money. If you give me your Ashivad, I'll get a free cure. So many people come to me and ask for Ashivad for studies. I, tell, I'm, I myself was useless in studies. Only when I came to read Prabhupada's books, I had some some intelligence. To, otherwise, I was I. I was a failure, so don't ask for my Ashiva. Not for this. So to be one with the Guru, how can we be one with the Guru in heart when our heart is contaminated? That's why we approach a Guru, isn't it? Tadvigyanatam saguru me chet. For attaining spiritual knowledge, we approach a Guru, but we don't have spiritual knowledge. We're lacking in that. The, the, the heart of the Guru means that he is Mukunda Prishta, very dear to Mukunda, or Krishna Prishta, very dear to Krishna. But we are not, we have our own interests. So how can we, how can we actually follow the instructions of the Guru? We've approached him because we're contaminated. Then how can we properly follow his instructions because our tendency will the cheating propensity is being 
described here. We have the tendency to want to change that, to take his instructions and use for our own sense gratification. That's why I'm say saying the whole history of religion is one of taking the instructions of great spiritual personalities and twisting them for our own personal sense gratification. So it seems to be like an, an impossible dilemma that we have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master, taking, taking them to heart, making our heart one with the Guru. But at the same time, we're not, we can't be fully one with him because we're in a contaminated situation. That's why we came to him. Therefore, sincerity is required. That, that we may be contaminated, but we should have the sincere desire to become uncontaminated. And that will be awakened, maintained, reinforced and increased. That sincere desire will be reinforced by hearing. By hearing what? By hearing again and again, what is our situation? Sevan Mukta. The desire. What does sincerity mean? Often this question is asked. Sincerity means the desire to serve without any other motivation. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitaite Kariya Aikya Ana Kareho Manayasha. That's the same definition of Uttama Bhakti. Anya Bila Ashita Shunyam. Jnana kama jnana vritam anukulyena krishna anushilanam bhakti rutama. Anushilanam means cultivation. Anyabilashita means, anyabilashita shunya means that even we may not be wholly free from other desires, but the contamination may be there in the heart, but it is our desire to be free from extraneous desires. And that is the qualification for Uttama Bhakti. Uttama Bhakti can be understood as, there can be, well, according to this verse, Anushilana means cultivation, so it means cultivation of Bhakti heading towards the topmost level. We've heard, it used to be very popular in ISKCON, the seven habits of highly effective people. So one of them is start with the goal in mind. So that's good observation. That's true in bhakti also. That we will, we will end up where we aim at. If our aim is the heavenly planets, then we might go there. If our aim is to you see, you can join ISKCON for many things. You, can, you might aim to go to the heavenly planets. There was one devotee, he openly said, he's old now, he's living in Puri, but he openly, he was in Calcutta temple for many years, ISKCON temple. He openly said that, I, I want to go to the heavenly planets, so I'm going to dedicate my whole life for serving the Vaishnavas. And by their grace, I want to go to the heavenly planets. He, he openly said, very good, did very nice service, but it was... He had no interest in, in hearing, but he liked to serve. So his aim was, I will go to the heavenly planets. Others are more practical, you could say, for this life. They want to go to America. And by the grace of the International Society for Krishna Conscious, many of them get there. So if that's your aim, you can get there, or you can get to the heavenly planets. If our aim is Vaikuntha Bhakti, we can go. If our aim is Ayodhya Bhakti, we can go. If our aim is Braja Bhakti, we can go. According to the desire we cultivate while we're here, then that will manifest. Yadrasi Yadrasi Shraddha Siddhim Bhavati Tadrasi According to the faith we develop, while we're here, we get the result later on. So, but at the same time, we should understand, just like we say, that 
this movement, not we say, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that this this movement is meant or specific mostly the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they are aiming at Braja Bhakti. Among Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers, there were also devotees of Lord Ram. But the Rupanuga Sampradaya, we see Rupa Goswami, he was trying to convince his brother to give up Ram Bhakti and take to Krishna Bhakti, and which Krishna, of course, um, Rupa Goswami also wrote, he made those two dramas, Lalita Madhav and Vidagda Madhav. So he also wrote about Krishna outside Vrindavan, but his personal tendency was to worship Krishna in Vrindavan. So the aim of this movement is to go to Vrindavan. But that Vrindavan, that doesn't mean Loi Bazaar, Gopinath Bazaar, Anaj Mandi, all this. That, that Vrindavan is the land of full self-surrender, where there's no personal desire, far beyond any tinge of personal desire. Shvara Sikhi Siddhi Braja Gopiya Dhan Paramachanchala Sati Jogi Radhyan Nirbhishe Shogyan Ekane Napai Stiti That Shvara, the, desi- the personal serve, every single gopi in Vrindavan has her own personal mood of service, which is Paramachanchala Sati. But here, this nirvishesh gyan, or cultivation of knowledge of the impersonal absolute, or, or the, the dhyan, the meditation of the yogis, there is no place here, it's far beyond that. So this is, if one is sincere, that, that sincere is not that those who are not Vaikuntavasis or Ayodhyavasis, not that they're not sincere, but the desire of those who are heading for Vrindavan is so pure that they take pleasure in seeing the pleasure of Radha and Krishna, not in their own. Their own, they're not so much concerned, I will enjoy with, I will be happy seeing Krishna. But they want to see Krishna happy, Radha and Krishna together happy. That is their happiness. So that is very high level. It means no personal desire, not even, not even a spiritual personal desire. There can be spiritual personal desires. So, but of course the devotees, they also, they desire, they have desired, but their desire is fully subordinated to seeing Radha and Krishna happy. So this is sincerity at the highest level. The happiness of seeing the Krishna together with Radha. So that is being described by, that is being given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That, uh, there's so many descriptions of the Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Sri Radha Madhava Pada Sarasidja Ashe Bhakati Vinoda Shaki Pade Shukhe Bhashe. But you know, Thakur is described, he's so happy, I'm very happy. Floating in happiness. Seeing the, uh, uh, serving at the lotus feet of the devotees of Radha Madhava. Desiring the service of Radha Madhava. So there's, not that the devotees are not happy, but they, they only know happiness, as Prabhupada described in one purport, a devotee only knows happiness by seeing Krishna happy. That is the standard of happiness. So this is sincerity. That this is practiced in relationship to one's guru with the faith that guru is a channel through which that service will be offered to Krishna. 
यस्य प्रसादात् भगवत् प्रसादो यस्य प्रसाद नगति कथोपि दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेरी हाई लेवल्स दैट वी आर एमिंग फॉर बट हाउ टू रीच दैट सीम सच अ a long way far away but that krishna has arranged that we can become close by this simple system of offering all our services without any personal desire through the medium of the spiritual master and if we do that then we become purified if we try for that then krishna will help us if we actually desire to come to this platform anya abhilashita shunya then by this process guru mukha padma vakya chitaite kari aika ana kari hamane asha then krishna will give us the intelligence by which our desires will gradually become purified So this is the system. This is reflected in this material world, in what we would call Vedic culture or human culture, in which elders are to be respected. That is there just to, well, apart from helping to maintain order in society, that is to train us so that we can. <coughs> when we find actual guru then he will train us that we can follow of course that may be dangerous also because the tendency to follow others if we get the wrong leader then we'll go to the wrong place and hai atha andai what is that upaniya manas the blind following the blind so there's a danger there. and that's why in the modern age people don't want to follow leaders because they're afraid they are afraid we'll be cheated and they're afraid everyone that everyone will cheat us there's no one fit to lead us so that fear is there but originally that culture is there that people are trained from birth to respect seniors so that's very good if then if then one goes on with that training and and finds the right guidance that means the in respectable families the family members will first of all give the basic training just like prabhupad said it and then later one can go to get the the perfect training just like prabhupad said i got the general guidance from my father how to be krishna conscious but my eternal spiritual master he actually prabhupad said i learned everything from my father but one thing i learned from my guru book distribution book publication and distribution otherwise practically he was trained at home in pure devotional service like bhakti siddhant sarsar thakur himself he was of course we're talking about great mahabhagavats they don't require training as such but they go through that process they apparently go through that process so bhakti siddhant sarsar thakur was also trained at home by his father not father he never saw him as father he always saw him as the uh, mahabhagavat but that training was there from father mother also his mother was also great pure devotee who knows her name quiz time mother of srila bhakti sridhar sarsar thakur parent mother anyone bhagavati devi her samadhi is there in mayapur at the jogpeet but you don't see because it's underneath the temple of this temple of gorgadatha just above you know gorgadatha behind the jogpeet and then nishimha is on the the other side so if you read bengali you can read it's written there about bhagavati this is her samadhi so he was trained like that but nevertheless he went for diksha to shila gorki shot as baba ji maharaj so he had these two two gurus you can say many gurus but particularly these were his two gurus shila bhakti vinod thako and shila gorki shot as baba ji maharaj nowadays people 
like myself, they come from a background of no culture whatsoever. Not, not to speak of Vedic culture, practically not even any human culture. So it's a different situation. Previously, people who would approach a guru, they would already have, in many cases, knowledge of the Vedas. People would, especially boys from Brahmin families, they would, they would be trained in a young, they'd have their school teacher or guru. But then they might also, after that, accept another guru for spiritual guidance. Of course, the distinction is... The distinction can be very fine because they're being taught the Vedas. But then for spiritual guidance, may, one may accept another guru also. Mantra guru. That, but in the past, people, they, they already have general faith in the Vedic knowledge and then they want to find a guru who can guide them to understand that Vedic knowledge. Whereas in the, in the modern age, people, they don't have that knowledge or faith. Someone was pointing out that, well, Prabhupada, he made so much emphasis on following the guru, which we don't find that anyone else previously did. We don't find in the previous acharyas in their writings. But the previous acharyas didn't have to do so because... You only need one slope. Acharyam maam vijani yam navaman yeta karhi chit yam arja buddhya suyeta sarva deva mayagra. That's there and there no. That's Then the whole culture is based on that. That when one gets a guru, one has to follow. But that culture isn't there, so Prabhupada had to establish that because without accepting this part of the culture, then one cannot make any spiritual advancement. So previously people would be well, they'd already be well trained in Vedic culture and then they'd come to accept a guru. That's why we find in the list, we'll find in Hari Bhakti Vilas, for instance, a list of qualifications of a disciple. And if you see, they're practically like a pure devotee already before they get initiated. And we don't find practically anyone nowadays who comes like that with these qualifications. They should already be self-controlled, well behaved and so many things. Well, that's the difference between Vaidik Diksha and Pancharatriki Diksha. Vaidiki Diksha, one, the candidate is qualified. And then it's seen, yes, this person is qualified, he should be given the mantra. But Pancharatriki Diksha is just given on the hope that they will be, there's some sincerity and they will become qualified. If they, if they agree to accept the guidance. <clears throat> so in Pancharatriki Diksha, it's practically understood there will be some fallout rate because people are getting initiated who aren't actually qualified to be initiated. But it's just given in the hope or that they may become, that they're showing inclination to follow the process. So all right, give them a chance. That's the idea. So, this culture has to be reinforced. How one has to be a follower. Of course, we hear a lot nowadays due to the history of ISKCON that one has to be very careful in accepting a guide, a spiritual, a spiritual master, as Prabhupada translated. Nowadays, often our devotees when they're preaching to others, in the Western countries especially, they don't say spiritual master, they say spiritual guide or spiritual mentor or spiritual teacher. Prabhupada translated as spiritual master. People don't like that term, master. I, I, I'm my own master, people want to think. But then one has no hope to enter the land of service, the spiritual world, unless one becomes a servant. And becoming a servant, just like people say, I'm a servant of the nation. It's a very vague statement. But to have a spiritual master means to be a servant of a specific person. It's not so vague. Yes, we're the servant of everyone. But spiritual master means you're a servant of a specific person. It's very specific that reinforces that sense that yes, 
you have to surrender. And one shouldn't accept a spiritual master unless he's ready to surrender. It's a very big commitment. But that is required. One surrender will be seen by how he's ready to carry out the instructions. Are you ready to carry out? Are you ready to follow? And not just in formality that that yeah I did everything the guru wanted and now I chanted my 16 rounds okay so now turn on the TV but the guru is there also no don't watch TV so many things we have to follow if one is to be a disciple so many things that people others people will not like our friends our relatives our mother our father our wife our husband they won't like no TV. Why don't you worry? Why don't you go with me to the movie? Why don't you eat in the restaurant? No, because I have to follow the order of Guru. Then the Guru becomes the enemy of all the family and friends of those persons. So we can meditate on this point. To honor the spiritual master means to carry out his instructions word for word. One has to be, as I was saying, one has to be very intelligent to understand what those words are. If one simply follows mechanically, then he also can't understand. One has to understand. Chitaite Korea Aikya. What is the what is the purpose? What is being what is the purpose of the that word? purpose we have to by hearing again and again we'll come to understand I am meant for service. I meant for service to Krishna, to Krishna's devotees. Then everything we can understand. Without this service, selfless service attitude, nothing can be understood. So this we have to hear. We have to serve and hear. And we can surrender and follow the instructions of one who we hear from and understand that yes, this hearing, what am I hearing? What is being spoken? This is Golokera Prema Dhan, Harinama Sankirtan. This sound, this vakya, this is not coming from the material platform, the platform of exploitation. This person is not speaking to because he wants to get something from me. He has something to give to me. This we should understand. What is that? That is not just scholarship, just like. Srila Bhaktisran Sarasar Thakur said, I approached my guru, Srila Gorki Shawadas Babaji Maharaj, and here I am, famous. He was already famous as a young man, as a tremendous scholar, defeating all other scholars. Famous as, as a highly aristocratic, well-behaved, moral, and he approached Gorki Shawadas Babaji Maharaj just living like, like a madman, under some... What do you call that? The boat's awning. The wooden boat, they take the cover. Chai boat. You know what that is? Village people, they know. He's just living like, like a madman, without any clothes. Or sometimes he might have a coping from the, taken from the burning gut. Some, the body doesn't get completely burned. And Gorky Shaw will go and take something and put that and wrap it around. And maybe sometimes not. So, Srila Bhaktisiddhan Sarasar Thakur, greatest scholar, highly aristocratic, well-behaved, moral, and goes approaches Gorkisha, illiterate, crazy, I'm just saying according to external vision, not, res not considered respectable in human society, is not someone you'd want to invite to show the Bhadralok of Calcutta. You wouldn't want to show, this is my guru. It's your guru? Oh, they'd be afraid. And so many people, they wanted to initiate Siddhanta Saraswati. So many gurus, they were very eager. Yes, you can become my disciple. And then I will become more honored by having such a... You can come and you promote me. And then he approached Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj saying, well, so many want to initiate me. So he'll also want to initiate me. He didn't give a damn. He didn't care. Ah. What? Uh, uh, 
No, I, I don't want to initiate him. I initiated some people, be, someone before, he cheated me, I went away, I don't want to initiate anyone. So he's begging, please give me initiation. All cried, I'll ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, come back after some days. So he came after some days. And what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say? Oh, I forgot to ask him. He didn't care. He didn't care. He didn't care. So Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur said that I was considering my learning, my aristocracy, my reputation, my character to be so important. And then I saw that this person, he didn't care, he didn't care anything for any of that. And therefore I could understand that what he had is so much greater than what I thought I had and which was valid. What I was considering valuable, he did not care for in the slightest. So, if we find that someone has got something, they're connected, then we can surrender. And that we have to do by following the instructions. And then our channel back to Krishna becomes very easy. This is indicated here. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? Comment? Yeah, please take the mic all the way to the back. And while it's being taken, we can say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Hare Hare. Yeah. We accept a guru who we think has the same idea as me. Then we have a pet dog guru. <laughs> My dear pet dog, pat him on the head. <laughs> so what? We have to become the dog. Not that we make the guru the dog. <laughs> of course it is a hard to hard connection. Not just a formality. It should be a hard to hard connection. But maybe we should accept someone who is completely different. That might be better because if we think that I'm already very good and my guru will just give me a little bit more blessing, then we're in a bad situation. If we think that Jogata Bichare Kichu Nahi Pai, I've got nothing, I'm empty, I need, I, I need to be filled up, then Maybe we should, anyway, it's a very, we can't say in every individual case what's going on. It's between Krishna and the devotee. And we may be cheated also. If we want to be cheated, we'll be cheated. That's also there. We can cheat ourselves also, even formally accepting a guru. We may think this one will fulfill my sense gratification. I'll become his disciple because the temple president is his disciple, then the temple president will be look after me nicely and I'll get more facility and I there may be so thoughts like this also. Hmm. Then what's happening in India most of the time is that people they just come new and they're innocent and they just get pushed into, you know, whoever they come and they get pushed into that door and that's it. And they don't think much about it. But better to go in with intelligence. Otherwise, how can we surrender? We have to surrender intelligently. So if we don't use our intelligence to surrender, then it won't really be surrender at all. <laughs> 